What if I told you that you could develop an iOS app without ever having to own a Mac? Wondering how to do it? You only need a physical iOS device, a Windows machine, and a cable to connect the two. Let's find out how to do it. But wait, before we go any further, I need to thank Alessandro Simonelli. And I don't know why this comes out with an Italian accent, because kind of like the name um, sounds Italian. But please, Alessandro, let me know where you're from, because I'm very curious to know. Alessandro is my latest member in this channel, because you can join this channel as a member. Um, and it has two tiers, junior developer, senior developer. And as a senior developer, you also get a little shout out in my video. So here we are. Thank you so much to all of my members who are supporting me with a small fee a month during this adventure and pay for all this um, expensive studio equipment amongst other things. Um, thank you so much for that. If you are considering yourself, dear viewer, to become a member and support me a little bit, giving back for all the content that I'm putting out there for you, please click that join button and check out what it's all about. Now quickly on to the main event of today, building iOS apps on a Windows machine. So first, let's talk a little bit about what Xamarin Hot Restart is um, exactly. Um, so Xamarin Hot Restart enables you to quickly test changes to your app during development, including multi-file code edits, resources, and references. So if you know now about .NET Hot Reload, um, this takes it a step further because this also allows you to add resources or add new images that you can use straight away or add new references that you can use straight away, um, which is really cool. But this is very limited, well, very limited. It is limited to a certain scenario for now. It is very um, limited to, well, it says here Visual Studio 2019, but this also works in Visual Studio 2022, as I'm about to show you. Um, and it supports iOS apps only using Xamarin Forms. So um, kind of like the only scenario where you can use this is Xamarin Forms um, when building iOS apps. What it doesn't say here is that you can also use this to develop your iOS apps using just a physical device, iOS device, a cable, and a Windows machine. Um, and I left out one little thing. You also need a paid Apple developer account. Um, but that you need anyway if you want to take your app to the store at some point, right? So um, that's also what's listed here, the requirements. Visual, this is just the software requirements I see. Visual Studio 2019 or higher. Um, iTunes, we'll see about that in a little bit. Um, and an Apple developer account and paid Apple developer program enrollment. Now that is everything you need. And here you can see initial setup. Um, you need to enable this under preview features. Um, technically, this is still listed as a preview feature, but it works just fine. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is turned on by default by now and this docs might be a little bit outdated. Um, now let's just quickly switch over to Visual Studio 2022 and see how all of this works. So here we are in Visual Studio 2022, and I just created a file new Xamarin Forms application. You can see it here in XAML. This is just a template that you will get out of the box, nothing fancy here. Um, but what you can see is that I set the configuration here at the top to debug and iPhone. Um, so I only have the iOS project in here. If we go over to our Solution Explorer. I have the shared project here at the top, which is your Xamarin Forms project. That's where you want to have your code. Um, and I have the iOS target here with all the iOS specific bits. Now, typically, if you start a project, you can also have the Android and the UWP projects in here. I left them all out. I'm just focusing on the iOS one right now, um, which allows me to set the debug configuration right here and also the iPhone configuration. And then it says local device. So make sure that you set it to the local device. Also, of course, we have possibilities to do it with a remote device or through a simulator, which will connect over the network to a Mac. But we're going to use the local device. Again, I'm just plugging in this cable into a Windows machine. There is no Mac in the network right here. You can see it's not connected. Typically, whenever you have the Mac connected, you can see here it's paired to a Mac. This is not set up. This is not working right now. So if I set this to local device and I just press the run button, it will come up with a um, wizard that will help me set up the hot restart. Here we are. Um, set up hot restart. And this wizard will guide you through the process of setting up deploying to a local iOS device. So th there is something interesting here. This feature is designed to be used during app development and will not allow you to publish your app. Don't worry about that. Make sure to watch the whole video. I will answer a little bit about that as well, how you can overcome that problem. 
Um, so, okay, this is all fine. Let's click next. Um, install iTunes. I haven't set that up. Um, here is a little note about how to set it up, why you need it, etc., etc. I think you need it because it will um, give you some libraries. It will give you some APIs that are used to connect to your um, iOS device on Windows. And those are used to then deploy your app to that device and um, run all the things from there. So you need to set it up. Let me do that um, a little bit quickly. So there was will be a little edit cut in the video here. Um, I will go over this really, really quickly. I assume that you can download and install iTunes by yourself. So let's just quick, uh, quickly skip over this and go to the next step. Okay, so iTunes is installed. I've done that through the Microsoft Store. You can just find it there. Um, and when I close this, we should be able back here. And you can see that this um, wizard now picked up in iTunes has been successfully installed. It will automatically see that. So we never have to leave this uh, wizard right here. We can just wait for iTunes to install and then we can click Next. Um, now it's waiting for an iOS device to be connected. Now. Here is where it got a little bit funky for me when I try to prepare this demo. Um, so I have this iOS device right here. Look, it turns on. I have the cable. I had it already connected. Let me disconnect and connect it again. Um, it, you can see here at the corner, well, actually not because I'm in the way, you can see that it picks up on my iPhone. So it, it sees it's here. Um, but what I actually needed to do is start iTunes to actually um, let it pick up on this phone. So um, let me see, this is not going to be the most polished demo that you will ever see. Um, but let's go over into iTunes and let's see if we can get this device to show up there. So um, it's probably has to do with the license agreement. Let's agree to that. Um, and then we have to um, um, disconnect and connect our device and it has to show up in kind of like iTunes. So also here, agree to this, which is fine. Um, let me move this to the side a little bit. Can I do that iTunes? No, you're not going to let me. Okay, that's cool because it's just hanging in general. Um, iTunes is, well, well, I never really liked iTunes, but <laughs> um, iTunes is, is, you know, Apple made it necessary to um, do it on Windows, but it never really has been great. Okay, it seems to be responsive now. So let me just disconnect and connect this again. And hopefully this will just show up here. Do you want to allow this computer to access? Yes, continue. Uh, we might want to set up something here on this device as well. You can see it has this little dialog which asks me to trust this device. Let me trust it. Um, you shouldn't have to log in with like, oh, I see a little icon here. You shouldn't have to log in with your um, account or whatnot. So welcome to your new iPhone because this is a test device. So this is set up as um, a, a rather new device, sync with iTunes, get started, which is fine. Okay, here you can see all the um, numbers of my iPhone. So I assume that is um, connected by now. And you can see again that the um, wizard has picked up on that. So a device has been connected, please continue. You can see it's called iPhone. Um, let's click next. And now you have to log in with your Apple ID. So let me just quickly do that, which is, here we are. And whoops, made a little typo there. And add my password here. All right, let's click next. And it's going to sync my Apple device uh, developer info. Um, you can see this comes up with a little um, Mac pop-up dialog because I'm, um, I'm using remote desktop into this Windows machine. So that's why this pop-up comes up, um, which is in this case um, pretty handy because I have two factor authentication setup, of course. So let's do allow. You can see this little code coming in here um, and I can just enter this code um, and you can see that it will then authenticate me. So that's verified. Let's do this. Syncing developer teams. Okay, and now it's logged in. Um, so you can see it syncs the teams and here is the teams that are configured for my account. Um, and you can select the, the team that you want to use to do this iOS development. So I'm going to click this one here. It's going to create some certificates. It's going to do some things in the background. You can see it's very busy. Um, you have to wait and now boom, automatic provisioning completed successfully. And now everything is ready for my app to run from Windows on my iOS device. So let's click finish here. And you can see that here at the top, it went very fast. Um, it went to iPhone from local device. Now the build is successful. Um, you have to have your device unlocked actually. 
I have to redo this again. It's deploying into device iPhone. So it's just building the file new exam informs application and it should show up on my physical device here. It might take a little while the first time, uh, but the really cool thing is, is that you can develop um, your application while it's actually running. And that is the, the real power of hot restart. Um, so you can now add all these things um, oh, I need to launch the application manually. So here's a little icon and whenever I do, you can see that um, there comes my um, Xamarin Forms app running on a physical iOS device through Visual Studio. Um, now also the, the, the hot restart, hot reload things just work. So if I change the, the big blue color bar um, to red right here, you can see that that automatically pops up. It should. Um, whenever we change that, maybe I need to save the file here and it should, here you go, it goes to red. Now let's make it green just so you can see that there are actually changes going on. So green, um, let's do that. Let's make sure that this doesn't go to sleep. Save my changes and it changes to green. Now this is just the color of course, but you can change all the things you want. And um, this is literally just a iOS device connected to a Windows machine running a iOS app. So how cool is that? So you probably have mainly two, maybe three, maybe a lot more questions right now, um, but I'm going to try and answer a couple of those that are on the top of my mind. So the first one is, um, will this also work for a .NET MAUI application at this time? So the answer right now is no, I couldn't get it to run in Visual Studio 2022 with a .NET MAUI project. It seems to go a far a long way because it sees my Apple device, it sees my um, all the things, the, the, the signing, the certificates, it seems to almost work. So I'm not sure if this is due to something in hot restart, or maybe um, the fact that we are not able to deploy um, .NET MAUI applications to physical devices yet. I'm not really sure, um, but hopefully in the future, we will be able to use this. Now, the other one is, is this functionality going to come to like Visual Studio for Mac or maybe other um, ways or maybe to Android as well? Because this is not just about like running um, iOS apps on a Windows machine, right? So uh, because the functionality is actually about being able to um, basically create your whole app, add resources, add um, references, add all the things um, without having to restart your application. So that would be coming uh, very handy for Android or all the other platforms and on Visual Studio for Mac as well. Um, so on the docs page that I showed earlier, it said that that is on the roadmap. So I hope that's not outdated and it's still on the roadmap and it's still something that's going to be developed. Now, the last thing is probably the big one that you're asking, like the thing that I mentioned in the beginning, um, I can't run this app, um, this debug build on the App Store. If I want to provide something to the App Store, I'm going to still need to compile on a Mac. Now, that is kind of an easy one to get around because you have free hosted Mac machines on Azure DevOps or on App Center. And there's probably other solutions that kind of offer this as well. You can even do a solution like Mac in Cloud, which allows you to rent a Mac machine somewhere in the cloud. Um, you could send your code to there. You can do the little compilation and you only need to do that last compilation that you are going to send to the App Store you have to do on a physical Mac machine. So if you set up your CI CD pipeline um, on Azure DevOps, you can do that for free, I think for 240 build minutes each month. Um, and you do all the development on your Windows machine, you push your code to the repository, it starts building on your CI pipeline, and it automatically pushes from there to the App Store, which is completely legitimate. It works, um, you can do it. And that is how you're able to develop a iOS app only through Windows and a physical iOS device. Isn't that mind blowing? Um, thank you so much again for watching one of my videos. If you've liked this one, please click that like button so more people can join in on this fun and um, can stop buying expensive Mac machines to actually develop their iOS applications. If you like this channel, if you've seen a couple of videos now and you think like, that Gerald, that seemed like a really nice guy who knows his stuff, please subscribe to my channel so that I will pop up in your feed automatically and you don't have to come searching for me. Other than that, I only, of course, have to say only one thing, keep coding.